And thanks for staying with us on the market, please. Finance Minister Ken Ofriata has left Accra for China for a debt restructuring talks with the Asian country. The president, the finance minister, will actually make a stop in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, for a high-level minister's meeting on global financial architecture. Then, on the 22nd of March, we expect him in China for uh, those talks to begin. Now, the trip was postponed, you remember? Uh, it was supposed to happen in February, but then it was postponed because of the National People's Congress of China. And now we understand the minister has already met with officials of the Exim Bank, uh, China in Ghana, uh, all in line with the reprofiling talks. Uh, joining us to discuss what to expect in the days ahead is uh, Associate Professor of Finance at the Andrews University, uh, Professor Williams Rupa. Thanks so much for your time. And so, uh, what would these talks in the coming days entail and uh, once the finance minister uh, makes his way to China? Good afternoon, Daryl, and thank you very much for calling me. Good afternoon to your viewers. Um, so, um, what we are expecting these talks to um, come out with this. Um, whether China will accept um, a possible um, reprofiling or lengthening the, the, the duration of the debt that Ghana is holding, that is 1.7 billion, or um, possibly a reduction in interest rates charged mm -hmm. on the amount. But knowing um, what has been the position of um, China um, with what they have done with other countries, um, we've noticed that they would rather prefer um, to um, um, lengthen the, the length of the repayment period with a view of um, having a, a schedule to reduce both the interest and principal payment yearly. Um, if, if all goes well and Well, unfortunately, uh, Professor Williams, we are frozen there, joining us all the way from the U.S. Uh, hopefully, we'll get him back on. But uh, the news this afternoon is that the Finance Minister, Ken Ofriata, is on his way to China for debt restructuring talks. He's made a stop at Addis Ababa for a high-level finance minister's meeting on uh, global financial architecture. And so right after that meeting, he'll be headed for China, where we expect the talks on debt uh, reprofiling to begin and uh, Professor Williams Rippa was just giving us insight as to what to expect. We'll make connection with him once again and continue that conversation. But I want to talk to you next about um, the t bills auction for last Friday and news that interest rates fell again as uh, the t bills were oversubscribed uh, by about 40% to the tune of 3.89 billion cities. Now, according to the auction results by the Bank of Ghana, the bids for the 91-day bill were far more uh, higher than expected or the targeted amount. So on Zoom with us right now, Head of Trading at Republic Securities, uh, Patrick Adam Algama, uh, to talk more about it. So Patrick, give us a rundown from last Friday. Can you hear me, Patrick? All right, uh, we've lost Patrick too. So um, let's let's see if we can get him back on on the on the marketplace. But we can't have him right now. I don't know if we can do the CocoBot interview as well. But uh, the guy at CocoBot says it will continue to work with state security agencies to stop the smuggling of cocoa beans uh, to Ghana's neighboring countries. We'll get on to that topic, but let's get you right back to the issues to do with the. Uh, Treasury Bills, uh, Patrick Adam Agawa joining us to give us a rundown uh, on, on what happened last Friday. So we understand interest rates fell once again. Government uh, secured an oversubscription of 40% on the 91-day bill. Tell us more. Okay, good afternoon, Dara uh, and everyone. So on um, last Friday, we saw a target of 2.78 billion being made, so again oversubscribed by 3.879 billion Ghana cities. Um, we, we can see that for the fourth consecutive time, the short end of the yield curve has dropped again, and we see the 91 day clearing at 18.53%, dropping by 147.09 basis point. The 91, uh, the 182 day also cleared at least 1.27 decreasing by 157.73 basis point. 
in all these uh, subscriptions, we've seen that the 91 day recorded close to 74.9% of the total bids accepted against 25.1% for the 182 day deal. Uh, so the interest rates from somewhere around 35% to uh, what I'm hearing right now, 20%, do we expect the interest rates to continue to fall? Yes, so far as we have this level of demand in the market, we expect it to fall. This week, for instance, uh, the government is targeting, collecting a total of about 3.2 billion through the issuance of 182 day, 91 day, and 364 day. So we, we still expect the excess liquidity on the market to be channeled to these uh, deals. And well, the fear is that if interest rates continue to fall, then investors would look uh, would, would lose interest and put their money somewhere. Uh, is that something that you anticipate would happen? Well, it depends on uh, other in, um, economic indicators like we have the policy rate and also the inflation if they also follow the same trend we expect investors to still keep uh, having confidence in the bill but if they do not follow the same trend and just this particular interest rate keep dropping definitely to reach a point where investors will not be able to accept uh, decrease uh, rates anymore all right let's talk about the capital market the stock market uh, we expect it to continue its good run this week uh, tell us what was the outcome last week and what to expect this week as well? Well, for last week, we saw six equities gaining and one losing. We saw Unilever, MTN, for Gini Tennis Ghana Brewery Limited, New Gold ETF, and Total gaining some uh, point points. But we also saw Societe losing about 24 pesos to close at 66 pesos. For this week so far, we are already seeing demand mounting strongly for MTN, Bob, and Total. We expect this to continue uh, for some time. And also, we, we, we can also see that Societe is also building up in terms of the offer side. And that is also expected to uh, happen um, for some time. All right. Thank you, Patrick Edema Gama, Head of Trading Republic Securities. I appreciate your time. Uh, turning back now to Professor Williams Pippa, who has been speaking with us about the finance minister's expected engagement with the Chinese on a debt restructuring. Hopefully we have him back. And so you are making a point, uh, Prof. Pippa, on what these discussions in the coming days would entail. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Professor Pippa? All right, uh, we don't have him now, but let's talk about oil now. Of course, 39 oil marketing companies have signed on to government's gold for oil program. That's according to data uh, that we have received from uh, the National Petroleum Authority. But there are the oil marketing companies going to pass on the cost to consumers. Here's George Riaffe with that report. Friday, March 17, this is the number of oil marketing companies that have signed up to this program. This means that out of the over 100 oil marketing firms in the country, just 39 have signed up to this initiative. This was due to an earlier requirement that only oil marketing companies that have a certain number of service stations in the country and are willing to fully pass on the benefits to consumers can't sign up to this program. But Joy Business is learning that all oil marketing companies are now permitted to participate as long as they are in good standing with the National Petroleum Authority and the Ghana Revenue Authority and that sign an undertaking to pass on the benefits to consumers. Some of the oil firms that have signed up include Market Leader, Guel, Star Oil, Puma, Zen and Allied. Whilst government insists the program is the major reason for the price reduction in recent times, some of the oil marketing firms have told Joy Business that it is rather one of the reasons. They argue that unless the program is able to supply at least 50% of market products, it cannot be the main reason for the price reduction in recent times. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Obamia says the Bank of Ghana could be saving about $5 billion every year because of this gold for oil program.
Now, Senior Country Man Manager for the International Finance Corporation, Kyle Kelhofer, has criticized governments, previous and current governments of Ghana, for what he terms as the lack of adequate investments in industrialization and manufacturing. This, he says, is affecting uh, economic growth. He has been speaking with my colleague, James Ishen. Um, I spent the last 11 years managing IFC's operations, first in Bangladesh for four years, and then Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos for seven years. And so it's delighted to come back. Um, but the experience in those countries was profound to see how manufacturing and manufacturing-led exports has provided stability to the economy, growth to the economy, more and better jobs, particularly better jobs for women. Okay, and and large scale scale of exports. So, for instance, like in Bangladesh, 95% of the exports are apparel. Okay, and yet you've seen the GDP per capita grown to where it's now higher than India. Okay, and same thing in Vietnam, where they've grown up value chain of of export led manufacturing growth. Um, and just created more and better jobs. In Bangladesh, they started out, some Koreans came and established a few companies, and for the first 10, 15 years, it was primarily Korean companies. But then the Bangladesh, Bangladesh companies learned how to do this. They were supplying, and then they eventually started their own manufacturing companies. Currently in Vietnam, I would say 95% of the companies are still foreign-owned, for instance. But the jobs, and the better jobs, are for the Vietnamese. What can we do as a country, basically? Because it's it's a conversation that we keep having every day, but yet it appears we're still where we are. What can we learn from this as a country? I actually think, and I compare it to when I lived here 10 and 15 years ago, Ghana actually is in a position now to replicate some of these successes in East Asia, because you do have a track record of stability, that it is a safe and stable environment, that there is reliable power supply, there is reliable water, there are efficient world-class ports here. There is proximity to markets to Europe, the US. There are things like AGOA. There's a very well-trained workforce, but also now is very competitively priced compared to wage differentials in Asia. So there's a business case that maybe didn't exist 10 to 15 years ago that does exist. And, and, and sadly, and there is unfortunately some devaluations taking place, but every time there's devaluation, these industries are that much more competitive. So we can say we are now on track. I think I think we're on track, and we're seeing more start up. We have, we have GTRTs coming. We have tile manufacturers. We have some furniture manufacturers. So we're seeing these starting to take place, and let's see how it transpires over the coming years. They, they're starting off well. They're they're meeting efficiency measures on that can be compared to Asia. Um, they're having brand access to these markets. They're training up these workforce, primarily women, providing a safe, stable working environment um so let, let, let's see but i think i think we're on track how is the manufacturing investment in this part of our world like historically it hasn't been as big as say as compared to to asia okay that it's been much more primary commodity services and agriculture um but i do think there is this opportunity and we're seeing more interest um from international players whether it's from south asia whether it's from east asia whether it's from latin america to think about building facilities here Next, uh, the Dean of the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Justice Bowley, has made a call uh, to corporate institutions to implement leadership programs to uh, train the next generation to equip them for the job market. Here's more in this report. On Ajakom Kufo Foundation, instituted the Kufo Scholars Program to train university students over a three-year period in leadership, good governance, and sustainable socioeconomic development. Speaking at the graduation and induction ceremonies of the 2022 and 2025 batches respectively, Dean of the University of Business Professor Justice Bowley lauded the initiative and urged organizations to emulate it. One of the critical um, uh, deficits in our training across all Ghanaian universities is the issue of leadership, if you like, soft skills in general, leadership, communication, empathy, uh, ability to work in groups and stuff like that. Those are things that if you go to the market, you would hear uh, business leaders complain about. And so programs such as this one uh, actually equip those students, especially those who, uh, whose universities do not have programs in place uh, to ensure that they get those skill sets before they go out. And I'm particularly happy that these foundations are coming up uh, to provide these kinds of skills because the universities are really overwhelmed. 
and that um, and when these foundations come to support what the universities will typically be doing then you know that we are going to be having holistic uh, development and so let me call out to other um, institutions especially corporate uh, Ghana uh, to either initiate such similar projects or to support universities and foundations that are already in it with funding uh, so that we can do more of those. Former president and founder of the Jack Foundation, John Ajekum Kufo, advised the scholars to focus on impacting humanity. He emphasized the importance of servant leadership to effect change. Focus on your using your leadership to serve humanity. The focus should be on humanity. To me, the rationale for everything is mankind, humanity. If we focus on man and using the principles we are talking about, wanting to better the lot of our of mankind, I tell you, you your, your brain power will empower you, it will enable you, render services that you live even to be proud by when you serve humanity with humility. Focus, finding ways. We talk of servant leadership. That's what I hope for all of you. I pray that you get it. You are bright. You are the sacrifice you are going to give. You are not going out there to satisfy your whims and caprices. No, you are going out there to better the lots. One of the graduating scholars, Elizabeth Osei, expressed gratitude for the opportunity to be part of the program. The program has really been impactful for me. It's one of the best things that has ever happened in my life and I'm so grateful for this opportunity given me. I'm prepared for the job market. This program has taught me to be innovative, to be creative, to think outside the box and I believe that I'll be able to excel wherever I find myself thanks to the Kofor Scholars Program. All right, uh, some news from Cocoa Board for us. The Cocoa Board Anti-Smuggling Tax Force has retrieved over 1,500 bags of cocoa beans. Uh, cocoa Board says it will continue to work with state agencies to stop the smuggling. Head of Public Affairs at Cocoa Board, uh, Fifi Boafo, joins us to tell us uh, more about this. Grateful you could join us. So tell us about this latest incident where the Anti-Smuggling Tax Force has retrieved over 1,500 uh, bags of cocoa beans. Yes, um, it's not a new thing this year. Uh, beginning this year, we've had incidents of uh, smuggling across our borders. But this one happened the last two, uh, just the March this year. And it's a bit of an alarming signal because in a situation where you have uh, smuggling not just happening along our borders, but also happening inland, it's a cause for concern. This happened in Accra, and there's an incident that happened at Aflau and along the borders. Uh, beginning of October last year, there have been a number of incidents where our tax force or our special service have collaborated with the security agencies, the uh, National Investigative Bureau, as well as the police to arrest such persons who are involved in the smuggling of uh, cocoa from Ghana. So it is through the collaboration we're able to make the arrest of this 1,500 bags of cocoa uh, in a period of two weeks. And as you indicate, this is not uh, a new thing. What is accounting for the smuggling cases? Uh, we're hearing stuff to do with pricing. Do you... Well, <clears throat> pricing because uh, in the last five, six years, Ghana has had a better price compared to the one that is being offered by our neighboring countries. This year, it is not a case that Ghana is offering a better price. So yes, mm. there's a likelihood that that could account for what is happening. Uh, we've also had it as a, as a phenomenon where people have made it a business. So it's now a business by these people who buy the cocoa from our farmers and then they transport it along the borders of our country to go and sell in different countries. The people are direct uh, beneficiaries of what is happening and unfortunately Ghana or the farmers are not benefiting from this act. But, but who are those doing the smuggling? Is it the farmer, the Ghanaian farmer? Well, 
Uh, to a very large extent, the beneficiaries of this activity are not the farmers. They are some private individuals, call them business people, but these are rogue business people who are engaged in this illegal activity. They go to the farmers, buy the cocoa, some with the support of some licensed buying companies. They buy the cocoa, put it together, and then they move across the borders. I must admit that in very few instances, we have some farmers engaged in that. But for the farmers, they do very small quantities, four or five bags, walk across the border and get it sold. But these people are people who have truck loads of cocoa and then they get it along the borders. One instance which has been reported recently is actually, they actually brought the cocoa to Accra as though this cocoa was coming to cocoa, uh, cocoa board for export, rebag it and then get it along the border so they can smuggle it out of the country. Unfortunately, let me even add that there are people who have been arrested who are not even Ghanaians. These are foreigners whose prime objective is just to make money out of our system and they are involved in this unfortunate business. Well, uh, the anti-smuggling tax force is exercises showing some results, but how do we put an end to the smuggling, uh, perhaps uniform pricing for cocoa? Well, uniform pricing is a difficult one to ask for at this point, uh, because Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire are the major, uh, the two major producers of cocoa. Over the years, I've been collaborating. But uh, you have an instance where Cote d'Ivoire, in the last five years, I've been pleading with Ghana to reduce our price in order uh, to have the same price with the Ivorians. But then we have not heeded to that call because we felt that, considering the situation our farmers were in, it was going to be difficult to reduce the price of our farmers to be at the same level with them. So we have not done that. So at this point, if we are to ask them to also reduce their price to be at the same level with us, that would, that would be difficult. And the price difference is largely due to the exchange differences, the, the strength of the CFA against our currency. Our expectation is that we will be able to find means of addressing the issue permanently. Because if you just say that, OK, well, now there's price difference. Let us adjust our price to uh, address the issue. It does not solve the problem. And there's a need for us to make sure that we solve the problem permanently. And uh, I, I want to ask you about this as well, how this is impacting on our targets for the year and how, how is that benefiting Ivory Coast? Because it's improving their sales, isn't it? Well, uh, Cote d'Ivoire is a beneficiary of this, um, as well as Togo, as our records indicate. And it has an effect on our uh, projected targets this year. Because if you look at the quantities that is moving along the borders, it puts us in a very disadvantaged position in terms of how much cocoa we are able to produce at the end of the year. Uh, at a point in time, some weeks uh, or even a month, there are some districts that we are even recording uh, almost zero uh, purchases from these districts. It's an indication that between January to March, if we are not getting purchases from these key districts, then it means that there's something wrong with uh, the system. Because these are not the times where you expect that uh, licensed buying companies will not be making purchases. So if there are purchases and then they are not recording in our system, it means that they are being diverted. So it's a very, it's a strong cause for us to be concerned. And indeed, yes, we are genuinely concerned about it. And we are taking steps to address these concerns. I want to ask you uh, next about the issue to do with illegal mining and how it's impacting on cocoa production. In fact, there was a, a program last week where some cocoa farmers gathered, I think it was a fair trade event, where it came up once again that the EU is warning if we don't uh, find a solution to this, they may not uh, patronize stuff like cocoa from Ghana. I know that the Cocoa Board has put in place some initiatives. How is that working? It's worked to a very large extent, but it is not an antidote as we speak because the illegal miners are still in the business, unfortunately, uh, and it is affecting us. It is affecting production, it's affecting cocoa lands, and then it's affecting lands that are adjoining these uh, cocoa farms that have, been, that have been converted 
to illegal mine sites. It has not solved the problem. We are still exploring other means of addressing the issue, but it, it remains a major challenge to us, and then we need everyone's support and assistance and collaboration to get this done. If I, I say so because uh, the security agencies must come in. Mm. The media, uh, we expect to continue uh, the calls to ensure that we stop this illegal act because it affects as that on our country. So yes, the collaboration is expected. We've made some gains, okay. but it's sufficient. I appreciate your time. Head of Public Affairs at Coco Board, Fifi Boafo, thank you so much. Uh, that's the marketplace. Apologies, we couldn't conclude the conversation on the finance minister's trip to China, uh, but we continue to monitor developments. Right now, he is in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, for a high-level meeting of finance ministers, and he'll be headed to China for the debt restructuring talks. We will keep following and update you uh, subsequently. Thanks for watching the marketplace. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. The marketplace returns tomorrow.